Hey, it's Elizabeth, Countess of Low Carb, and on this edition of Countess of Low Carb in the Car, we're going to talk about before you weigh yourself, what do you need to do? Check us out in this episode. Countess of Low Carb, and on this episode, we're going to talk about getting on the scale. So I've got some tips for you, but first I have to show you my beautiful view. I am a road warrior today, and so I have this gorgeous view, though, while I wanted to stop and show you. Can you see that? The beautiful leaves and the mountains of the leaves turning. Virginia is so beautiful. I love my state. Anyways, so I digress. Let's dive into about weight loss. So we're going to talk here about a couple of strategies that you can do before you step on the scale. And y'all know my rule. Do not get on the scale, but once a month, because if there's children, put earbuds in their ears. Before you get on the scale, do it once a month. If you do it more than that, you are going to mind F yourself. You are gonna start the ping pong match in your head um, about the number on the scale. That does not define who you are. That is not who you are, is not a number. We're not a number. Um, but it just simply is a measuring stick of your progress. So instead of using a measuring stick of a number, why not take photos of yourself? You can take photos if you wanna do it every day, if you wanna do it once a week. I personally do it once a week because um, I like to have the tracking of it and I really can see that and with clothes um, where my measuring stick is with weight loss. So when I do weigh myself, it is but once a month, my friends, and I would encourage you to do the same thing. Before you do your weight loss, a couple of things. One, the pre-prep the night before. So many people, again, can go into this mind F of weighing themselves and the number not being where they thought it would be. I worked so hard this week. I did so much stuff. I get it. In my private coaching, if you go to countessoflowcarb.com, you can sign up for private coaching or group coaching. But in there, I frequently hear coaching clients talk about, the scale didn't go the way I wanted it to, and I'm a failure. And it takes them down this like rat hole of like, it makes the um, insanity start in the brain. And so let's preemptively strike that off of doing a few things not to start that insanity. And the first thing is the night before or the day before, for dinner, you don't really want to eat out. The reason why is there's so much sodium and takeout food or to-go food or restaurant food or even Panera or these delicious, beautiful places of where we get our prepackaged meals from. Um, there's sodium and that sodium, y'all, is going to be water retention. And when you have that, it's just going to suck into your body that salt, that sodium, and that's going to retain water and that's going to make you weigh more than you really do weigh. It's going to retain that water in your body and you're going to weigh more than you weigh. Even in the keto diet, which I love. I'm a love, love, love keto, um, Atkins type diet, diets, the, the high fat, high protein, low carb diets. Even with that, you still will have water retention. So don't go have um, sushi, even though I don't eat the rice with sushi. Um, I have sashimi and with a soy sauce that's really, you will hold into your body. Um, Mexican, even if you have like the fajitas, that has a ton of salt in it. So if I start rattling off some of these to-go things. Um, even if you go, by the way, to IHOP, if you get an omelet there, they put pancake batter in their omelets. I was stunned. I was stunned. And that to me was like a wake up call. Like, oh my word, people are putting random stuff in my takeout food, which is why I encourage you to have a meal plan so you can eat at home more so you're not getting prepackaged food. So um, my next tip with that is first, don't eat out. The next thing is, is if you're cooking at home, make sure it's not something that is high in sodium. So for example, if you have chicken broth, for example, check the sodium content. If it has a ton of sodium, you're going to shouldn't want, you don't want to weigh yourself the next day. What I would encourage is like a fresh green salad with some meat on top, um, or something uh, along those lines of where it's just simple meat that you maybe grilled the meat and you know what the, the rub is on top of the meat or the marinade that you put in there, um, that maybe you're just using some olive oil to fry up the meat, um, or or some other kind of the avocado oil or some other kind of oil in there um, so it's not it's cutting out the sodium so watch your sodium it's in freaking everything and you need to be mindful of that because you don't want to start that rat race of oh, I didn't weigh what I thought I was gonna weigh don't do that so that's number one number two is then when you go weigh yourself do not weigh yourself during the day do it first thing when you wake up go to the bathroom, then go to the scale. And before you go to scale, take off your clothes so you're not weighing yourself with all these different things. You know, I wear a million pieces of jewelry. Like, take that all off. Take off your glasses, if you can see. <laughs> Get it all, you know, make sure you're weighing yourself. I see people weighing themselves at night or um, during the day. And y'all, you've eaten. There's food in there. That's not a true number of what you weigh. Do it in the morning. First thing, first thing, first thing. And even with a two-year-old, before I go get him started, I will 
make sure I'm up a little bit earlier to go in and um, go to the bathroom and then weigh myself. And along those same lines, the Countess does not like to get graphic or gross, but um, make sure you go to the bathroom. If you haven't gone to the bathroom, you know what I mean, in a while, uh, then perhaps you shouldn't weigh yourself because you're going to be backed up. And if you're backed up, that's going to affect the number two. So get it, affect the number as two, as in T-O-O, -O, not T-W-O. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. So those are some of my tips. Don't eat takeout food. If you do make something at home, make sure you check the sodium. Um, make sure that you're weighing yourself first thing in the morning. Um, make sure you take your clothes off so you're in your birthday suit. Um, and then the other thing is do this only once a month. If you do this more than once a month, you're going to mind F yourself. It's going to, and if you don't mind F yourself, I applaud you, but most people are not like that. So if you're in that space of where you can weigh yourself and it doesn't affect you or whatever, high five sister to you because most people are not like that. So those are my words of wisdom. I would love it if you consider liking this video, subscribing to this video, or sharing it with a friend. I'm sure you have a friend you know who's on this weight loss journey who probably would love to hear more about how to weigh yourself properly because people really can get wrapped up in that number and I, I, I hate it. I was in that mindset for, gosh, on my 40 pound weight loss, almost 45 pound weight loss, I was wrapped up in what defining who I was as a person in that number and freeing myself of that bondage is amazing. It's it's a transformational. It truly, truly is. As the weight melts off, my view of myself changes. So it continues to change, but it's not who I am is defined in my outer shell. So I love y'all. Make it a powerful day and put below in comments of what you do for your weight loss tips. And that's my question of the day. I would love to hear your weight loss tips. Talk to you soon. Bye.